Charlie O'Brien seems to be in third position. There's more cars off the road. They're all over the place. They're having a lovely time. Car number seven, Peter Brock, no less, the expert. Yes, and a very smooth drive in his win last event, but uh, he certainly had a little bit of untidiness there at Repco. Kevin Barclay, he is the old man of the road. I was down there chatting with him before this race, and I said, come on, Kevin, you're not really taking this seriously. And he said, oh, yes, I am. I'm out of these single-seaters now, and I'm really... And somebody giving him a tap in the rear end there. That was a little pushy. Oh, there's a new one. And, of course, Charlie O'Brien's the man who's tucking in behind him. They are all over the road. <laughs> and those tyres squealing galore as they come down to the uh, start-finish line. And uh, number five, Kevin Bartlett, has still retained the lead. And I think we can only uh, use the term retained. You've never seen so many officials getting out of the way here as they're going along. They're bringing up the back right now, by the way, is Tony Edmondson, who obviously had troubles earlier on there. But you have to consider these are some of the best drivers that Australia has ever produced. Didi Pirani must be wondering what the hang is going on in there. He would think it was one of those Renault races that they have in France where they've got cars all over the place. Well, John Bohr there has got the red car into second place now. I haven't seen anything on there is Pirani. Car number nine, he's in there. That's the man we just took just now. He's looking at this summer of madness with some interest and concern because, remember, he's one of the entrants in the Grand Prix of... Australia that takes place tomorrow he's come many thousands of miles for this performance and here he's watching a bunch of people who are using parts of the racetrack with a virgin territory <laughs> and farming down on the outside as they approach uh, their entry into the straight but Kevin Bartlett still with the lead as he comes into uh, Repco corner again so Kevin Bartlett's first John Bowie second Jim Richards is third Charlie O'Brien is fourth down in Number 10 is Colin Bond, he's fifth, and then after him you've got Didi Pirani in sixth position. These are the top six as they go in here, remember, 11 starters. They've got to run tomorrow again, they've got to race with the same cars, so if they damage them beyond uh, repair, it's their loss. So obviously there, there is some concern with regards to keeping a few door handles on there, although the opening laps wouldn't have suggested that then. We still have 11 starters, I thought that we were going to end up with about one or two from that performance. Uh, on that first lap he got it all crossed up he's got it all going the wrong way he comes back onto the racetrack he goes down and jack gives him one up you know where he as they come through here on the very last lap and look at this that's close that's peter brock there in that red car who's putting a bit of pressure on there a sensational finish to what has been a sensational race coming up on their final lap now down the back straight and getting set to move into the guesses. Kevin Bartlett again holding off John Bell. Okay, remember this. Tomorrow they start off in reverse position. In other words, if Kevin Bartlett can hold it together now on these last two corners, it means that he's going to start in the back of the grid tomorrow, which is going to be fun for everybody. And look at this. He's got it all the John way Bell again doing a little farming. And he's going to hold second place as they come through. So Kevin Bartlett waves a happy man. John Bow. Oh. With me, one of the best-known drivers, one of the best-known motor racing experts in our business, a man who's flown right round the world to be here, let's welcome Jackie Stewart. Jackie, great to have you back on day two. Ken, thank you very much. Well, yesterday for me was a tremendously exciting race. We finished off yesterday's telecast with the Commodore race. It's a long while, Ken, since I've seen motor racing to be as exciting as that. With all the top names of Australia, with Didi Pironi from France in the middle of it, it certainly was one of the most amazing races that I've seen, with behaviour pattern something left to be desired as far as driver etiquette was concerned, but still good racing. And we're going to start off today's coverage with uh, another event in that line, because this is the second heat, and therefore the points that were counted yesterday will also be added to today, and this promises to be a great event. Bob Jane in his very own racetrack here had a lot of trouble. He finished six. Did he appear any, even though Jack Brabham did his very best to take him out totally, finished seventh. Colin Bond was eighth. Jack Brabham himself finished ninth. Dick Johnson was 10th, and filling the, the field was Tony Edmondson. Now, today, they're reversing the grid positions that they were given yesterday. There's going to be points awarded for this. 110, as you can see from your screen there, goes to Kevin Barclay. But that means the same number of points are going to be awarded today. So it's certainly not impossible, for example, for Peter Brock 
to still win this great event. And of course, uh, naturally, there is also the opportunity from people right around Australia to win a Holden Commodore for pace car simply by going into their Holden dealers and the pace car used on this event, which has just left the circuit at this moment, is the one that could be won by some lucky Australian. There we are, from the air, Calder Motor Raceway live on 105 stations. Let's have a look at the scene here from the air and then move down to trackside. Tremendous coverage we have here, Ken. In fact, as we can see from our Channel 9 helicopter looking down on this racetrack, um, I'm amazed. I mean, I cover a lot of races for American television and lots of other people for the BBC over in Britain, but I don't think I've ever seen quite so many cameras sent out around a racetrack to cover an event so well. I think we've got about 12 cameras here, and I don't think one incident yesterday was missed by our cameramen and our production crew. So, as a foreigner, I'm allowed to compliment the team. It's not an in-house compliment, it's those men there, the cameraman that you're looking at right now, the cherry picker that's down for the moment. These are the people who are bringing this sort of coverage to motor racing that Australia, I don't believe, has ever seen before. And look at that, we're now looking down and Jack Brabham was one of our cameramen right beside the great Sir Jack and a pretty lady wishing him all the very best. Jack Brabham, a man that I've raced against so many times, tremendously talented and, and one of the great men of motorsport. As a matter of fact, Jack was telling me that he went uh, straight into the first corner, shut his eyes and was warned. <laughs> As a matter of fact, all the drivers were warned that they would have to drive just a little more sanely today. Richards and Peroni, they collided. Peroni spun out and came back into Bumser Jack. Looking forward to uh, the race today, he said. A lot of fun in his own quiet manner. Would have certainly been uh, a little bit more competitive if the cars would have been in Grand Prix, but uh, he said it was fantastic to have a person like Alan Jones here, and it was great to be out here on the circuit and also helping some of the younger people in uh, Formula 2 and also in Formula Ford. Well, the lineup as we see it right now, we have Jack Brabham, who in fact is in pole position. Then we have Colin Bond side, alongside him there in the front row of the grid. And you can see Colin Bond again with a pretty lady paying attention for him. And there you see the lineup there uh, with the, uh, the starting numbers, the starting positions and the car numbers, etc. Jack Brabham, Colin Bond, then Didi Pironi in the next row with Jim Richards. Then on the third row, Peter Brock and John Bow on the fourth row you've got Kevin Bartlett and Bob Jane that's a little tidy number for you then you've got Dick Johnson Tony Edmondson and bringing up the rear Charlie O'Brien all out in his own because it's 11 cars that are running here and there you see the lineup and remember it's hundred and ten points that the winner gets the cars are now, the grid is being cleared. A little creeping and oh, Charlie O'Brien started off at at least 30 miles an hour. Charlie O'Brien's gone through and taken the lead. I'm sure he's going to be penalised because the starter pointed a finger right down at him. Look at the weaving and ducking as they go in there. Jack Brabham is in the red car on the inside. He comes out of that in third or fourth position. O'Brien's already very wide coming out of Repco. They're side by side already. A little bit of dust and gravel being put up there. There are three abreast coming down from Retco. And there's certainly much even in this, first, much more even than yesterday in this first lap. I think there's much more determination here, Jackie, with these drivers today to uh, make up for some of those bad lines of yesterday. I, listen, don't think about it. Look, what do you call that for a line? They haven't even got on the racetrack yet. There's more on the grass than anything else. Really side by side, pushing it as hard as they were yesterday. Let's see who's coming through there. Can we read the numbers? It's almost impossible. Brabham certainly dropped back quite a lot. Coming onto the front straight, and there's cars all over the road. And Peter Brock was saying that the first lap yesterday was horrendous, and naturally the first lap today has been that way for them. Car number one, Charlie O'Brien is leading, but as you said, he could have been and may have been penalised by the clerk of the course. Well, I certainly, he did jump the start. There's no question about that. From our commentary position here, we can see it. And there you see again, slow motion, the replay coming out of there. They're all over the place. That's Repco that they're coming out of. The car on the right-hand side, I can't even see his number right now for the dust, but he's back on. Charlie O'Brien is reading at this time. Jack Brabham is there. And we're back live now. The blue flag has been shown. That's the flag to suggest to people that there may be somebody overtaking. Brabham's in third position right now. And Peter Brock, of course, in the black car, is trying to uh, make up some sort of position there. Peter Brock, a man who has a great reputation at stake here, too. Yesterday, he didn't do so well in this event, but it's certainly a much tighter field right at the top. I a bit think tidier there, too, I think, Jackie, coming into the straight. 
Well, I think Peter Brock's in second position right now. It could be that he's in there. Let's see. It's car number one, then car number seven. That is Peter Brock. Then car number six is John Bowe. John Bowe's well up, remember. They've got to consider the points of the future. Car John came three, second that, yesterday. That's Dick Johnson, car number three there. But still in the lead on the road, at least, is car number one, Charlie O'Brien. Car number two, Tony Edmondson's right at the back of the field. He's had a moment. He's been in trouble, so therefore he's right at the back of the field. And the positions after two laps, it's been uh, changed. Uh, Charlie O'Brien is in the lead on our screen, followed very closely by Brock. Uh, we would have to, and John Bowe in third position, we would have to wait for uh, the officials to give us the official uh, uh, placings at the end of this, but that's the way the race is running at this moment. It does look by the flash that came up on our screens that the officials may have already considered it a penalty for Charlie O'Brien to have jumped the flag, and we'll have to wait for confirmation of that. And Colin Bond, of course, in the first four, too. He's not uh, a man to be left out of contention. But he looks as though he's opened up a fair distance between himself and the rest of the cars, Charlie O'Brien, as he comes down towards Repco again. So, Charlie O'Brien, officially, a word from the officials, has been penalised by one minute. So, and poor Tom old Charlie, anticipating that start, is a kind way of saying he certainly jumped it. <laughs> and look at this, car number 11, gentleman Jack Brabham, totally in the wrong lane, obviously thinking of something else. And Tony Edmondson bringing right up the rear. Tony seems to have dropped out of contention altogether. But then we have the placings, the official placings at the moment after three laps. Peter Brock, one. John Bauer, two. Didier Peroni, three. He's uh, certainly made up some time. That's Tony Edmondson now bringing up the rear and the tyres screaming as they come through. Glow weave again and enter the straight. A little bit tidier, Jack. Well, Jim Richards right now is in fourth position. He's up in fourth position. Kevin Bartlett's in fifth position. Remember the man who won yesterday? He's in fifth position. As they come past here, they start finishing line again. Bob Kevin. Jane's in, sixth, in fifth position. And Jack seems to have dropped right back, uh, running into uh, second last position. Tony Edmondson just crawling down the straight as the rest of the cars pour through on Repco. And here we are again, right off the road. Car number 10 is Colin Bond. Colin, he was out in a Jaguar, had his wheels fall off yesterday. He looks like his car's falling off today. He's certainly accustomed to that sort of traffic and that sort of uh, roadway too, because he's one of our leading rally drivers. Well, he certainly prefers it on the outside. Jack Brabham, there he is in the red car, <laughs> using a little bit of the green and brown stuff. I think he may have decided that discretion uh, is certainly the best point of Alan. He's decided to pull out of the fray at this moment after being involved with at least three shunts yesterday. Well, that's Dick Johnson he's got in his sights right now. Poor Dick Johnson. If he's seen what happened to everybody yesterday that was close to poor old Jack, must be trembling in his, in his driving seat right now. And Colin Bartlett is trying to make up time down the straight too. Charlie O'Brien still in the lead, but of course penalised one minute for jumping that start. Peter Brock out there officially, John Bauer, Didier Peroni, one, two, and three, and the rest are trying to turn it on down general credits back straight as they head towards the S's. Well, putting it in the points level right now, you would have to look at John Bow as the leader, and there you see the job that Colin Bond has to have in hand. He, he's not the man in our picture right now because it's still Jack Brabham that's in our picture, and the man trying to get past him is Dick Johnson. In fact, he had passed Dick, so Dick's busy trying to repass him again. Jack Brabham with his off-course excursions certainly has fallen well behind the leading bunch. Kevin Bartlett was saying that he would try to keep it straight and clean. He just drove and drove yesterday. And he, although he was starting from further back, said he would desperately try to get up in the front. But at this moment, uh, Bo and also uh, Brock seem to uh, be able to keep him out as the main bunch pour down the straight. And looking back, we have three cars practically lock and lock together. Well, there you see a show there in number seven. He's got alongside Peter Brock's alongside. Can he do it? This is a real tight number. And there you see Didi Pirani in car number nine there. He seemed to be in problems too. They've got closed right up together. Peter Brock, in fact, is now taking the lead, going neck and neck down the back stretch. Peter Brock's done it. Can he hold it? And Charlie, Charlie O'Brien has spun right off into the inside. The crowd love it. Everybody's up in their feet. Poor Charlie can't see a thing. It's got the London fog in there. Look at the mess there. He doesn't know where he is. Charlie O'Brien. And here you see the replay once more. Charlie O'Brien spins out. Peter Brock, there he goes. He gets through. No trouble. Spun out all the way. Spinning to a stop and getting himself restarted. 
Number six has got himself into second place. John Bow is in second place. Number five seems to be in third place. That's Kevin Bartlett. Kevin's got himself right up into third place now. That's the man who won yesterday. This puts a lot of pressure on everybody. Remember, it's points to count for this Commodore event. Brocky got helped off the track a couple of times yesterday, but... Uh... Kevin enjoyed his race and he's enjoying it even more today but Brock again up front with Bo trying to uh, pass him down our back straight as they head into the S's and this is the problem area for Charlie O'Brien last time but they've got through at that uh, time a little more safer than Charlie did. Peter Brock, what? Peter Brock, one of the real talents of motor racing. I prophesy if Peter Brock were to go over to Europe, he could stand at his own two feet against any of the drivers in the world in this formula of racing without any threat at all. He could be a very talented man indeed. With only two laps to go, he's got a very narrow lead over John Bow. remember? John Bow finished second yesterday, and in the point standings, this could be impressive. He could win this championship event if he stayed where he was, and I think he's got his... I set in trying to win this. Let me tell you what would happen right here, Ken, if you were a real keen racing driver and you were just a little naughty. In about the last lap coming into the last corner, you would just give Peter Brock a little bump in the rear end. Poor Peter would spin out and the man in the red car would win. Believe me. I know you've been in several of these events before. <laughs> Well, you're just going to watch and see if there are any gentlemen down in Australia here driving racing cars because John Boat is in exactly the right position to do this and as they come down here, they're only one lap to go. So they're only one lap to go as they come round here, remember. They're on the second lap right, right now, second last lap coming up to the start finishing line. And of course, there you see it, as they pass there, Brock has got a considerable advantage this time, obviously a wee bit of an advantage. He's got to keep that on this last lap now, they're on the final lap. And Bob but Jane in the back is starting to make his move too. Now watch for Bo. He's got to stay very close now. He's got to get he's got to get right up behind them on this part. Look at them at the back there, side by side as they come out of Repco. Bob Jane's amongst that lock and look at it in the inside. He hasn't done it because Peter Brock moved over into what would have to be considered an unconventional line. Now wait for it. If this were one Jay Stewart and he wasn't being very gentlemanly, I'd give that black car a little tap in the rear end about now. It seems as though John Bow is just a little bit more of a gentleman than you, Jackie. <laughs> and now they sweep in towards the checkered flag now. Well, I don't know if I would have done that, really, but that's the way to do it if you really want to do it and become no friends to anyone. Look at that. Peter Brock, justifiably the winner. John Bow, therefore, should come forward and win this Commodore event, and Kevin Bartlett, I think, will finish second in that. And then followed up by bon Jer Bob Jane as they went across the line in the first four positions, and they have certainly settled down. They've, they've decided not even to, uh, to go through a quick uh, lap following this event, but as far as it went in heat two of the Holden Dealer Team Commodore Race of Champions, Peter Brock in place, in place number one, car number seven, John Bow in car number six came in second, Kevin Bartlett, car number five, came in third. And what a great event.